Uh, thank you. I'm very pleased to be here. Uh, I'm not a neuro person. I'm a, a blood person by background, but I'm really uh, glad to be able to present our work on mutant microglia and how this might promote resilience to Alzheimer's disease. Uh, we have a great team, uh, all housed in the Department of Pathology. Uh, myself, Marius Wernig, Jody Hooper, Caleb LaRoe, as well as several trainees and collaborating neuropathologists. So one thing I want you guys to take away from this talk is that we are all mosaics. And, and what do I mean by that? Uh, when we're born, we have a single genome that we got from our mom and our dad, but our cells acquire mutations constantly throughout life. Now, most of these mutations are harmless. They have no fitness consequence upon the cell, but rarely mutations will arise that allow a cell to expand because it has a fitness advantage. And when this happens in the blood, we refer to this as clonal hematopoiesis. So by the time we reach middle age, all of us have these clonal hematopoiesis mutations in us. And so that is why I say we are all mosaics. We all have these clones to varying degrees. Now, this is very important in the process of cancer, of course, because if additional cooperating mutations are acquired, cancer can result, and this is largely why cancer is a disease of aging, because it just takes time to acquire all of these different mutations and have them grow out. Now, we showed several years ago that this phenomenon, clonal hematopoiesis, is incredibly common. Uh, it occurs in about 10 to 30 percent of people over the age of 70. Now, one of the really interesting things about studying blood stem cells is it has the, they have the potential to influence many different disease processes. So the, these mutations occur in hematopoietic stem cells, but the stem cells can then differentiate and divide into all of the circulating immune cells in the body, including lymphocytes, monocytes, uh, the precursors of red blood cells, platelets, et cetera. And so there is the potential to influence many diseases since the immune system does interact with pretty much everything. And indeed, we and others in epidemiological studies as well as mouse model studies have shown that having these clonal hematopoiesis mutations can increase various outcomes like mortality related to heart failure, increased risk of cardiovascular diseases and diabetes, et cetera. And so we wondered, since given that we now know that neurodegenerative disease is largely or to a very large extent driven by dysfunction of the microglia, could clonal hematopoiesis also play a role in neurodegenerative diseases? And so we did this analysis in very large human cohorts, and we did find an association, but it was surprising. Instead of an increased risk of developing Alzheimer's disease, we found that people who had these mutations actually had about 30 to 40 percent reduced risk of developing uh, Alzheimer's, which is a risk reduction on par with carrying an ApoE E2 allele. We did another type of analysis called Mendelian randomization. It's a form of causal inference. In this analysis, uh, supported that these mutations were causally reducing the risk of Alzheimer's disease. And finally, we looked at individuals who never developed clinical dementia in their lifetime, uh, but donated their brains at death to ask, are there any changes in the neuropathology in individuals with clonal hematopoiesis? And indeed, we found that people who had these mutations had less amyloid and less tau pathology in their brain, all consistent with the protection against Alzheimer's disease. And now there's one problem with kind of this model that I'm proposing, which is that these peripheral immune cells might be protecting against Alzheimer's. And that is that the current dogma in the field is that the resident immune cells of the brain, the microglia, arise during embryonic development. They're seeded by embryonic precursors, uh, as shown here but they don't have any ongoing contribution from the bone marrow in adult life, presumably because of the blood-brain barrier. And so we asked, could we find the same mutations that are present in the blood in the brain fraction uh, immune cells? And indeed we did. We looked in the microglia of the brain from humans with clonal hematopoiesis, and we found not just a few cells that carried these mutations, but 30 to 95% of the microglia in these humans were actually derived from the bone marrow from these mutant blood stem cells. So we know these mutations occur. We know that they protect against Alzheimer's disease, and we know we can find the mutated cells in the brain. And so the central question of this proposal is, what is it about these mutant cells that prevents AD? And we're going to look at this uh, in two ways. One is from uh, brain samples from people who have clonal hematopoiesis and developing technologies that allow us to interrogate which cells have the mutations and how they're different. 
And secondly, using experimental models where we engineer in the mutations into human microglia. So in the first project, uh, there are two challenges. We need to obtain fresh brain tissue from clonal hematopoiesis carriers, and we need a way to distinguish the mutant from the normal cells at a single cell level. And so to uh, obtain fresh brain samples, we're collaborating with Jody Hooper, who runs the Rapid Autopsy Program at Stanford. So she consents uh, people uh, and families of, of donors to donate their tissues, and we can uh, obtain them quickly. Uh, and identify the clonal hematopoiesis carriers, dissociate the brains into single cell suspensions, isolate microglia. Uh, and then we would like to perform single cell phenotyping, uh, ideally on a, a fluidics based platform like 10X. And in order to distinguish the mutant cells from the wild type cells, we are going to leverage technology developed by Caleb Leroux when he was a graduate student using mitochondrial, and not genomic, but mitochondrial DNA mutations as a form of lineage tracing. So if we have a, a paired bone marrow sample from somebody with clonal hematopoiesis, we can also use that information to identify mitochondrial mutations, which will then enable us to use, uh, to, to lineage trace those cells in single cell data uh, and distinguish mutant from wild type cells and see how they're different. Uh, our second approach is to uh, use, introduce these mutations using IPS technology developed by Marius Wernig, uh, so we can introduce the mutations in the various genes we're interested in, differentiate them into microglia as well as the other uh, brain subtypes, uh, and then culture them either in 2D or 3D organoids as well as transplant them into mice. This will enable us to assess a variety of uh, phenotypic responses to the mutant cells. So in summary, what do we hope to learn? How are these cells different? Do they perhaps have a superior ability to cross the blood-brain barrier? Uh, maybe once they're in the brain, do they proliferate more? Are they better at surviving in the brain microenvironment, thus replacing the dysfunctional aged microglia? Or do they have a superior phagocytic ability? We also would like to know to what extent this process occurs even in the absence of clonal hematopoiesis, and the, the technology that we're developing will allow us to determine that. And most importantly, we'd like to know if any of these mechanisms can be used uh, to create rational therapies for Alzheimer's disease by mimicking the effect of these protective mutations. Thank you. Hannah. Thank you for this uh, wonderful plan. Mm -hmm. um, I was wondering, could you, uh, when you looked at the somatic mutations that are now in the microglia, can you kind of deduce when that happened, when they actually entered the brain? Yeah, that's, uh, it would be great if we could do that, not with the technology that we have currently used. Uh, in order to do that, you would have to do a very expensive project, which involves uh, single cell whole, whole genome sequencing, which allows one to develop very detailed phylogenetic trees, as well as estimate the timing of when certain events happen. But with just standard sequencing, we cannot really determine the timing. One more quick question. So you, you kind of put your money down on one direction in this framework. And you know, could it be the other way around, where Alzheimer's disease or people who are at risk for it have a milieu that modulates the likelihood of having such mutations? So yeah. It's an interesting epidemiology that suggests that folks with AD are at lower risk of cancer. Exactly. And so you wonder, DNA exactly. stability, etc. Uh, it's a great question, and we could talk about this at length. I will say we did that Mendelian randomization analysis I told you about. We did the reverse. We asked if people who have a genetic risk of Alzheimer's also have an increased risk of developing clonal hematopoiesis. In that direction, we did not see an effect. So. Uh, and there are some other ways to go about that particular question. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you.